Hi, welcome back to Keep It Dirty, a podcast where my guests share their life living functionally and sustainably, and the why behind their experiences navigating through our ever-changing environment. I am your host, Leslie Dowling. I am a corporate speaker sharing how one can jumpstart your health through increased revenue and productivity through different restorative health techniques. It is a pleasure to welcome my guest, Ali Packarduni. Ali is an entrepreneur, philanthropist, and owner of Be My Boutique. So it's great to have you, Ali. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your passions and your drive behind all that you do and how you keep in check and in balance with just your health Uh, mentally and emotionally and just physically trying to package everything as you go through your life. Well, first, I want to say thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Um, I'm really excited. Um, Big question. You know, I always like to say uh, life is about learning. And I don't believe that I'll ever have it all figured out. Um, I am 27 years old now. Um, and I feel that I've already learned a lot and I hope to continue to evolve, um, with my business. A lot of my passion started from, um, I was born on Valentine's day and I always loved small acts of love. I always loved, uh, giving back through my time, talent, treasure, or ties. Um, I'm a firm believer that you don't always have to be donating monetarily. Uh, You can donate your time to people. And there's just so many different ways through your spoken word. And I think that starting my business, I knew that I wanted to obviously open up a boutique and get connected back with my hometown. Uh, This is a town that gave so much to me. And I was living in Philly and going to college and I loved the city. But when I was ready to move and wasn't sure what career path I was going to take yet. I knew that I wanted to come back here and kind of get back to my roots. And then as soon as I decided to open my boutique, it became a big instilling message in my business to connect it back to my community. And through my philanthropy work, I have done many different programs through my family philanthropies, but I really wanted to get more, um, my hands in the dirt and, get more involved within the community, especially if I was going to be a business owner in the community. And with balance, I mean, every day is different. Uh, I definitely am a person who struggles with mental health. And it's an ongoing battle. I mean, every day is different for everyone, especially in the ever changing world. We're all dealing with uh, comparisons because of a social media standard that's been created over the past few decades. And, you know, everybody continues to compare their lives. And I think that taking a step back and looking at our own lives and our own involvement is definitely something that helps me feel good is to connect with others. Uh, Obviously, physical health is something that has always helped uh, my mental stay balanced. I try to stay moving and say, well, whether it just be a walk or a workout class, I try not to hold too high of a standard to myself of what that movement may be. Um, Being a young woman, that has always been something that I think most women can relate to is holding ourselves to an extremely high standard to be in the best shape mentally, physically, uh, career driven, um, have a family and just continuing all these expectations on ourselves. So my New saying that I've held myself to as of this last year is to give ourselves grace, um, give ourselves more time, more patience. And I think that that has been something that has been helping me. But of course, I mean, we all have our our low days and our moments of being hard on ourselves. Uh, Last week, I did celebrate four years of owning my business and I was having a bad week. And that was just something that I was struggling to keep the balance of you know, recognizing this hard work, but also giving myself the grace and the space to um, feel those feelings and not make myself feel bad for them. Yeah, I I love the fact that you give yourself space and that you set realistic goals because you seem to have tapped in and really know the way that 
your body reacts to things the way that you are in situations. You're a strong, resilient woman on the outside, but we all are human and we all have our things that we have to just kind of take time to love ourselves. Because if we can't love and, and ourselves, how are we going to embrace and give that energy back to other people? Um, so it seems exactly. like we're just so far beyond your years. Um, but but for young entrepreneurs or somebody that really wants to take the reins and possibly start a business, what what kind of advice can you give to people? So I actually just had a couple of these discussions last week. I got the opportunity to speak at career day at a local high school, and I found that I have a little bit of a unconventional way of looking at things. Um, I found that I started my business based off of a passion, and then I'm working on making it a profitable and sustainable business to live with. But a lot of times people are going after what is going to make me the most money, which in turn can give you a sustainable and lovely life. But for a lot of people um, that get burnt out easily or need that passion drive like myself and many other individuals, um, I ask people to look internally a lot. I had students write down so simply five things that made themselves happy. And this is something that I still do a lot of times. I'm a big fan of journaling and self-reflecting. And I find that if you look at things that make you happy, um, direct that towards your passions, things that you enjoy doing. All right, now let's take that and how do we turn that into a career that you have an emotional connection to? I find that it's so important um, to, at one point, I always say, I may not love my job every moment of every day, but at one moment every day, I love my job. And that has always been something that I needed um, based off of someone who, you know, some days if I wake up and I'm not feeling the serotonin running through my body, I need something to get me out of bed that's going to make me want to go change the world in small ways, whether it be by word or change. Uh, So that is definitely my biggest advice. Obviously, then there's the steps like developing a business plan, the logistical steps. I was very honest with a group of kids and said when I was a little too nervous. And when I used to refer to my future as a pipe dream, because I was supposed to go one path, but I had this pipe dream I always wanted to do. And that was my store. Um, But it just seemed so far out of reach. And I asked kids to consider learning from my mistakes and stop thinking of your ideas as impossible and more thinking of them as realities and steps to take. So when I was too nervous to kind of tell people, hey, this is kind of what I want to do now. I went to my simple resources. I went to a good old Barnes and Noble and I sat down in the aisles and opened up the small business for dummies books and just started reading. I studied kinesiology in college, so I knew a good bit about the human body, but there were things I wanted to learn. Um, So I just started looking, um, opening books, uh, researching online. And I think that there's definitely the passion part of things, but there is the logistical steps, you know, capital and business plans and insurances, especially if you're going into an actual brick and mortar business. But I think just networking and talking to people and starting those conversations, talking to people that maybe are in a uh, spot where you would like to one day get to, I think, um, Definitely mentorship is a very positive thing. Um, I have uh, many girls that I have both learned from and taught. And I think that, you know, having those conversations with people and discussing our passions and creating more realities instead of these pipe dreams um, and actually forming plans to make the dreams a reality is a big step. And it all, I think, starts with confidence. It's something we all just, we all struggle with some days. And it's just so important because no one's going to believe in yourself like you're going to. No one's going to care about your business as much as you are. So you have to believe in it for it to succeed. And easier said than done. But I think it all really starts with that inner reflection. 
Yeah, and you're so involved with so many other programs, outreach programs, and, and just so instrumental in being active in the community, which I feel is so important. You know, my thing is supporting local businesses. And because I was in the retail business too with my family, and I know how it is. And it's just nice when you have that sense of community. And, um, and also, is it that you also had the opportunity to have cheerleaders around you, meaning like family that really support you just, you know, just to be there um, and be that cheerleader. And, you know, I think that's so important too. Uh, are people that see you on this journey. Sometimes it can be a very lonely journey when you have this vision and not everyone is as passionate, like you were saying. So maybe you could share with the viewers and listeners about that. Absolutely. Um, before I get into my amazing support system, a quote I directly heard by another entrepreneur in our area, George Zeppos, a week ago, he said, surround yourself by good people and good things will happen to you. Surround yourself by bad people and bad things will happen to you. And I really resonated with that because I found that there's always going to be people that doubt you um, and maybe battling with their own struggles and not taking that personally and choosing to separate yourself from anyone who doubts you and anyone who you feel um, makes you doubt yourself and surrounding yourself by good people who want to see you succeed and you want to see them succeed. I am so fortunate to have uh, my family, that is such a big support. I have an older brother who is a huge support all the way from the West Coast. And then I'm fortunate enough to live in my hometown where a lot of my family is. I get to have my younger cousin work for me on Sundays. I get to have my grandmother stop in to help me decorate. Uh, my mother has always been one of my hugest supporters. She is a phenomenal artist and where I get my creative eye from. And my father has been an entrepreneur uh, since I was born, and I've always looked up to that. And I think that one thing that he said to me when I was starting to discuss the possibility of not going to grad school and, you know, going and opening up my own business is he flat out just said, prove it. And it was just those two words. That's all I needed. It wasn't a no, this is a horrible idea. It wasn't. Um, sure, yeah, whatever you want, it was just prove it. And I felt that to myself and to everyone else, I hit the ground running. I learned how to run electrical. I mean, I proved it in ways I shouldn't have. Uh, there are definitely some things that I had to go back and circle back on, but it was just that support and that moment of giving my, giving me the space to explore that dream. And they have supported, my family has supported me in so many ways, opening my business two months before the pandemic shut down. Um, you know, it was a really, really tough time. I worked for my mom for a little bit to support the business. I mean, it is not all glamorous. Um, I think most entrepreneurs can speak to that. But definitely just having that security is something that I can I can never sum up into words besides just a huge amount of gratitude and having the community that is so supporting. It's a really big town that, you know, supports small businesses. And I think that I just am constantly reminded why I chose to open here instead of going somewhere else. I mean, having a fashion boutique in a Ta small town definitely gives me more battles than if I was in a fast city. But having that librarian from the fifth grade walk through the door and just shoot me a smile and say, I can't believe this is what you're doing, or having um, friendly faces just being able to pop in, but new conversations starting every day, the different levels of support are just immense. And I definitely would not be in the space that I am without that. And to all those who want to start a business and maybe aren't fortunate enough to have maybe that one person that believes in them, to outsource and to just surround yourself by good people. And it's easier said than done, but just to eliminate as much negativity from your life as you can 
because we're always going to have those doubters. I opened my business when I was 23 and I was at a point in my life where I am an extremely social person and I have always loved socializing and having a social life. But now as I near my 30s, um, I am taking a big step back and really focusing more on my business. And I think having those people in my life that support that and understand, um, I always say the best friends are the people that understand and don't expect an apology when you say, I am beat, I need some time to reflect. I never thought I'd be the type of person that needs my alone time, but I've reached that moment. Now, Leslie, you can get it. We are both social butterflies and uh, we get our energy from people, but everyone hits their moment where we're like, all right, I need my book. I need to just be alone. And it's the recharging that's important. But my biggest thing is really just uh, surrounding yourself by good people and good things will happen to you. Yeah. Wow. I could just sit here and sit back and just listen to you. Just keep going. Keep going, Allie. I, I love it. Um, and please feel free to cut me off if I get rambling, because <laughs> if there's one thing I know how to do is this. <laughs> and that's awesome, because I, I'm just so blown away how many people you've touched, um, especially the young Gen Zs that are just trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives and um, and just getting out there, like I said, to the communities and the high schools and uh, just really being authentic and being yourself and real. Um, because the other question I was going to ask is, um, how do you find yourself that you need to detox from social media sometimes? Because I know a lot of people were like, it's a love hate thing as much as I want to do it. So what are your thoughts on detoxing and giving your some downtime away from all this, you know? So uh, I definitely think that I have a unique um, outlook on that where I've never taken long period breaks, especially I felt that I always loved authentically sharing my content and not directly for other people or likes or views, but I always just loved capturing the things that I found beautiful in the world and the things that I found joy in. And I think that if people start looking at social media more from that outlet of this is something that I love, this is something that I found joy in. I'm going to share this no matter who it reaches. I used to write uh, poetry and I don't find as much time anymore to write. But when I do, I I like to share it for the two people that it reaches. Not I'm, I'm not publishing a book any day soon. I don't think I'm the most literate person out there. But it's sharing those things that I love and those passions and not as much of looking for a reaction from the community, which is funny because then I have my accounts that I run for my business, which is a complete different lens where I try and stay as authentic as possible at the same time, featuring content and featuring beautiful photos. So I think I'm able to have that balance where I have that aesthetically pleasing lens that I capture my business through. And then a little bit more on the authentic side is my my own accounts. But it's funny because I've found that in the past year, I check out a lot more from my phone in general, where I have my social media time, but mine is more from a what drains me most. And I think people need to look into Whatever it is that is draining you, if it is that social media to take a step back, if it is that comparison to other people, take a step back. For me personally, it is, I've always kind of had this expectation for myself to constantly be there, ready to answer people more of through a text or call situation. And my, my friends deal with it constantly where when I hit it, I hit do not disturb. I will go on do not disturb for a day if I need it, if that's what my body needs. And that's what my anxiety needs and my mindset for me to just check out, I will turn it off. And you know, if you really need me, shoot me an SOS. But those are the moments when I'm finding that that's what's draining me most. So I think for anybody to just self reflect and 
decide what outlet it is that is taking that from you. I know when I was in college, emails and any notifications used to be anxiety inducing for me. Obviously, then going into a business, that is something you need to overcome because you have to answer email. But I think that we all hit different points in our lives. And I definitely feel for the younger generations that grew up on social media and grew up with their life being in a lens and expecting everything to be well liked. I know I was fortunate enough to have a nice, long, awkward phase. Uh, So I got to really just embrace loving myself for whatever stage I was in in life. And it's definitely something that we constantly go in waves of. But I think in terms of social media and checking out, it's whatever you feel you need to check out. And anyone in your life that is good in your life and looking out for you and your wellness will understand that and will understand if you need to step back. And you can say simply, I love you. I appreciate you. But to love you at my full capacity, I have to give myself love. Um, You can only give as much as you have. And we've all been there where I have burnt out more times than I can imagine of give, 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 give. And then I wake up with no energy, no anything. And I have to go to work the next day. And it's just something that you have to look reflect in and if it is that social media then absolutely take a step back because at the end of the day unless that is your last post that is making rent for the month one good thing my mother told me one time is I I was in between what I wanted to do with my life and she simply said to me Allie I don't think anybody cares that much and I said what do you mean and she said you're putting this pressure that if you choose this one career, that it's going to ruin everybody else's lives. And she said, this decision affects you most. So what do you want? And she said, I don't think this is going to affect anybody else that much, but we all can't help to hold ourselves to this super high standard where we think that any change we make in our lives is going to implode in every direction and it's just surrounding yourself by those good people and again giving yourself the grace and the time no matter if it's that do not disturb button or I have friends who completely deleted their Instagram and but that's something I'll always love because I always love capturing the things I love and find beautiful but it I definitely I support anything that is good for your soul and your mental health um. I I just, I love that you, when you were just reflecting on Instagram, that you're putting out there things that are really hit home with you and that you love to do. And, and, and you have this higher vibration of this beautiful energy that will come back. And those are the people that you're surrounding yourself with. And, and that's, that's really such an awesome feeling when you just, put that out there into the world, into the planet of what you want, your intentions and your, you know, that, that good energy and, and people are attracted to that. And the people that can't deal with it will, you know, do their own thing. Um, So I would love to ask you, and I think you touched a little bit on it because you were talking about role models, but who would you say really, you know, as even either a little girl or now are your like role models that you look up to? So that's a toughie. Um, I've got some good ones out there. I think that I, growing up, my family unit, we are a really close knit bunch and my older brother is three years older and no matter if it was the years that we were fighting or what um he's always been kind of my soundboard and my person that I love to run things past and he definitely is my best friend and I think that there are so many things that I see in him that are as a role model um 
And then really just simply my parents. I think that they are now married for 30 plus years. Uh, They got married young. They had kids young. And whether it be from a family perspective or a business perspective or the things they've created, they've they've set the the tone. You know, um, I am a single person and I always say that, you know, um, I don't look for someone. I I definitely hope to find someone one day that matches me perfectly and not trying to fit into a puzzle piece that doesn't fit. I just think that they they made the template. You know, I got to see two people who were so different, but, you know, aside from differences, created this amazing family and so many things to look up to. Um, my father, uh, I'm so proud of the businesses he's created and, you know, he's always just a good person and he's funny and My mother is so rawly talented and has built an amazing career for herself. But two people that have always shown immense love to me as well. I think that, you know, love is so important in this world to make people feel loved and to share love and not be shy from it. You know, I I say I love you so frequently to people because, you know, you never know if they never got to hear it that day or just got to have a good feeling and I never had to worry about that. And so I think it's definitely, you know, my family and my parents and just every ounce of support they've shown to me, but also just being able to look up to what they've done and what they've created and only hoping I can continue to both just make them proud and create a life for myself that I'm proud of. And I definitely think that I guess it would be them. I love to hear that because I know my parents are my role models, even though they're looking down at me. I know that they're always guiding me because they were the trailblazers and really just never gave up and had these passions and just never had that fear of, oh, I'm not sure if I could do this. Oh, you know, and it's funny because a lot of my fellow practitioners, I had a vision of doing this podcast, reaching out to people, really awesome people like you that have the vision and the drive and the motivation, but also are real and authentic. And it's okay to have those days that you just can't be superwoman all day. Those are the people I resonate with. Um, So I, I wanted to ask you, for all the viewers and listeners, are there any hobbies or anything that you do that maybe we don't know about you? So it's one thing I always didn't tell people about as much. I mean, I aside from like physical activities, I mean, I grew up dancing and I danced majority of my life. Um, I always loved dabbling in the arts. I always loved painting with my mother. But it's really one thing that I just will always throw myself into is any type of volunteering at any capacity. The one thing that I don't talk about as much is my family foundation, which is based in New York. I'm so extremely proud of the amazing work that they've created. Uh, We are, uh, the foundation is now over 100 years old. They're the largest family run in the United States. And I get to get the opportunity. I always say that when you're given an opportunity, you're also given a responsibility uh, to take advantage of that opportunity that so many others would take. And I get to learn a lot about grant making and social justice and the ever worlding change around us. And I'm in a couple board uh, training programs to hopefully sit on one of the boards in the future. But I am in a point of education where I just want to keep learning as much as I can from as many people and connecting with as many people as possible. It's definitely not something I discuss a lot with people because uh, Family Foundation sounds very Monopoly, a bunch of old guys sitting with top hats and writing checks, Um, but it's really groundbreaking work that the organization is doing, and they've actually switched from There's a new style of philanthropy called trust-based philanthropy that our foundation just switched into, which means in the olden days or up until five years ago, we would have 
if people don't know what a request for proposal is, it's someone sends in a big, thick document that they spend hours and hours and hours of their time on, time that they could possibly be continuing work in their foundation. And it states what the money's going to, all the details of the organization's statistics, and we review that and then decide if funding is going to be gifted. But now we've switched to a lens called trust-based where it flips the power balance a little bit because there's always going to be a power imbalance when there's someone with the money and someone without the money. And now we look at the organizations, we see the work that they do, and we give them the money with no questions asked of, we say, you're the ones working in this industry. You're the ones with the background doing amazing work. Take the money and do what you need to do with it. And we will check back in, see how things are going, see what you need from us. But it's slowly and very slowly because the amount of things that are just systemically placed into our um, entire existence is constant struggle with power and balance between society and different groups. And I think that that's just something to be really proud of. So I've now started talking to people more about it and being more prideful of it and opening the conversation. So I think that that's just one thing that people might not know about me and my involvement in it. Um, There are very few situations of volunteering. I say no to. Um, I'm trying to get better at the two-letter word N-O, but I just get so excited, and I believe that we are all put on this earth for a reason, and I think that mine has always been to extend a hand where a hand is needed, and so trying not to burn out in the process and find that time to give ourselves grace, but that's definitely one of my extracurriculars that I'm extremely proud to be a part of. I love that you shared that with us because um, I I feel that the Gen Zs are so instrumental in just having that knowledge base of having access to everything. And and hopefully, is it a goal to be able to be the catalyst to start changing some of those bylaws to be more up to date with what's going on with our world? And just it sounds like they're really being proactive But um, I could just see you being a mover and shaker and and doing great things uh, for your um, organization and for people to uh, be able to really benefit. Um, So I I definitely want you back on in the near future. I want to hear all that you're doing. I'm sure everybody else would love to see what you're doing, how your work is going with Be Mine and all that you are doing for our community. So are there any special projects or anything that you're doing with your uh, your store that you'd like to share with everyone and how can they contact you? So I guess I'll start off with the short one and that is the best way to contact us. We are on all major social media outlets. We can also, uh, you can Google us and call the store phone. Uh, We post all of our up-to-date events and inventory and all that good stuff on Instagram and Facebook at the the letter, the number three Mind Boutique. Um, The B Mind Boutique was taken back in the day when I went to start. Um, Nuts. But uh, (laughs) then I, uh, event-wise, we have a lot coming up for the holiday season. I'm a big big fan outside of my own business in supporting small and notoriously the day after Black Friday is Small Business Saturday so going out in your communities our community will be having lots of events going on that day it's Saturday the 26th I believe I could be wrong and it's going to be a big day of you know getting out in the community and seeing what has been happening and how we can support those other businesses. We will be having sales at Be Mine. Then throughout the month of December, we'll be open late. Uh, We do cookies and cocoa every Friday. And we will be having special shopping opportunities, a men's shopping night where we will have some custom gift guides to shop for the ladies in your life. Uh, We will have special gift giving Saturdays. And then 
leading into the new year for those who um, don't get to see us over the holidays, we will be kicking off our largest drive of the year. I usually do two drives every year. Um, and in February, we do a help a girl out drive. Uh, it's a give love, get love. We ask for donations of feminine products and diapers, and we were able to collect, I believe, over 10,000 units last year and work together with a couple different companies now and different businesses that do collections as well. So again, just new ways to get out in the community, and we usually give a discount for those who donate. So it's a little bit of give love, get love, and ways for people to get involved. So please feel free to reach out with any questions. Wow. I love that you are doing so many great things and giving back to the community. And uh, yeah, it is a great time around the holidays to shop. So thanks. Thanks again, Allie. I really appreciate you being on my show. And of um, yeah. And, and for everyone, all you, the viewers and listeners, please show some love by um, hitting, you know, the subscribe to listen and to rate and review, keep it dirty. And also just remember, get out there, ground with Mother Earth and um, keep it dirty. Take care, everybody.